Welcome to the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. I created this podcast to inspire you to walk boldly in your Christian faith. Each weekday, I will talk about scripture and how these verses can relate to your everyday life. Spending time each day with the Word of God is a great way to fortify your faith. I'm so glad to have you along on this journey. Let's get started. Good morning. This morning I thought I would read another chapter of my book, Total Trust in God's Safe Embrace. The chapter I'm reading today is chapter one, The Power of Daily Prayer. Daily prayer is something I have strived to achieve for many years. I would try to spend time praying each day, but I was not really sure how. I would wonder if writing in my journal counted, or if me praying for a parking spot or for my child to fall asleep and take a nap, counted as prayer time for the day. I was so unsure and afraid to get it wrong. Have you ever felt that way? I can't be the only person that has been afraid of praying wrong. If I go back, I would tell my younger self, yes, all those prayers counted. I would tell myself that God is not sitting up there judging my prayers. He is happy that I took the time out of my day to talk with him. Your prayers are never wasted. It's not as if some count and some don't. God hears all of our prayers. If you're looking to deepen your relationship with God, a daily prayer practice is essential. This can be accomplished in many different ways. This section tells you about how I got started on my prayer journey. I will give you several examples of things I tried and ways you can develop a daily prayer habit. Sometimes we get so caught up in telling ourselves we don't know how to pray, we never start trying to develop the habit of prayer. Prayer was part of my life ever since I can remember. When I was young, my mom and dad would come to my room at night and say prayers with me. We said the same prayer every night as far as I can recall. Dear God, please bless my mother and father, my brothers and my sisters, my aunts and my uncles, and my cousins and my friends. Sometimes we would add, Please also bless those we know and everyone we don't know. This was a very simple prayer, and yet it covered everyone. If you're wondering why we didn't name our brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, and cousins, it's because I come from a very large family. There were 11 children in my family, and my mother was the oldest of 10 children. If we named everyone, I would never have gotten to sleep. Growing up Catholic, prayer was always part of Mass. We say many of the same prayers at Mass every week, so we have plenty of opportunity to learn several prayers to use even when we're outside of Mass. These prayers were our staple, and it felt great to have them when we wanted to pray. If someone asks you to pray for them, a Hail Mary or an Our Father is an excellent choice. However, these prayers did not give us much room to personalize them. I would hear other people come up with a prayer off the top of their head And I thought that was amazing. Also, when people would say grace and it was personal and individualized, I loved it. I wished I knew how to do that. I know there is no right or wrong way to pray. The definition for prayer is the following. Prayer, a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. So if we're just requesting something for God or expressing our thanks, How could there be a right or wrong way to pray? Do you ever wonder when you're saying thank you to a friend if you said it the right way? I doubt it. Do you question if you requested your combo meal from the fast food worker correctly? Nope. Then why do we question how we pray? I ask this as much to myself as to you. Until about a year ago, I felt really uncomfortable praying out loud unless it was a prayer I had memorized, like the Our Father. Two years ago, I joined a charismatic prayer group, and I remember the first time they asked us to put our hands on our neighbor's shoulder and pray over that person. I felt bad for the person I was praying over, because they had me praying over them. I felt like I wasn't good enough to pray over them, and someone else's prayer would be better. This may sound silly, but I bet many of you know exactly what I was feeling that day. Why do we struggle so much with wanting to say the right thing? 
I take comfort in knowing that I'm not the only one who feels as though I don't know how to pray. Even the disciples who were in the presence of Jesus were unsure of how to pray. In Luke chapter 11 verses 1 to 4 it says, One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. I have been listening to people pray out loud at my prayer group for two years now. And I realized everyone prays differently. There's not just one way to pray. There is no secret prayer formula to which God listens more closely. Do you ever feel like God hears other people's prayers more than he hears yours? Is it just me? In my family, we always say that my dad's prayers go straight to heaven. We think that because he prays more often, God hears his prayers more than ours. He is a prayer giant, and I'm sure you know someone who is. The truth is, God always listens. He listens to everyone's prayers, not just those who pray every day. In 1 John Chapter 5, verse 14, John says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. John goes on to say, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 15, And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. God hears your prayers, even if your prayers are not eloquent or too short, or nonspecific. He hears you. Having said all that, do not expect to suddenly feel comfortable praying just because someone told you there's no right or wrong way to pray. I wanted to explain some of the ways I started my prayer habit. I urge you to choose one of these and start your new prayer habit today. If you're already in the habit of praying every day, great. If you want to try something new, that's great too. Most importantly, Spend at least 10 minutes with God each and every day. You will begin to see a difference. To start, you can write in a prayer journal. Write down what you want to pray for or how your day was. I started this when I was struggling, and sometimes it would just be me expressing to God my hurts, my confusions, and or my struggles. Other times, I would request help for others or myself. Sometimes I would just thank him for all he has done. It was all very conversational. I started as if I was writing him a letter. I initially started with, Dear Lord. Now I start with, Good morning, Dad. There'll be more about prayer journaling in the next chapter. Pray with people when they ask you for prayers. People are always asking for prayers. Instead of saying, I will pray for them later, I started praying for them right there on the spot. Yes, I felt uncomfortable, and yes, I felt like I was doing it all wrong. Then I reminded myself, there's no wrong way, and that no one is judging me. I believe God loves it when we step out in faith and step outside our comfort zone to show his love to others. The only way to grow is to step outside your comfort zone and try something new. Just start with asking God for whatever the person needs. For instance, Dear Heavenly Father, please help my friend in this meeting with her boss today. Please give her the courage and wisdom she needs to say the things she needs to say. It could be that simple, just a quick prayer that's asking for whatever is needed at the time. Read the Bible more. When you immerse yourself in God's word, the words to pray over people come more easily. It is easier to call on God's promises to us because we know what God promises. If you've tried to read the Bible and just couldn't get through it, try again and start with the Gospels. They're more like stories than some of the Old Testament books. Father Mike Schmidt just started a podcast where he will read the Bible on the podcast in one year. This could be a great option if you have a commute. You could use this time to hear the Bible. He not only reads it, but he explains it in terms that make it easier to understand. Pray before meals. When the boys were little, they went to a Christian preschool. They were given a few different versions of prayers to say before meals. 
I printed them off and put a magnet on the back of them. Each night, one of the boys would pick one off the fridge, and that would be the prayer we said that night. Most of the time now, we say the main one that I've heard lots of people pray. Bless us, O Lord, in these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. You could just take a second and say, Thank you, God, for this food. Say the rosary daily. This takes about 20 to 30 minutes and can be a very powerful way to start the prayer habit. More about the rosary in chapter 3. Spend 10 minutes each day talking with God, out loud or in your head. I used to do this when I was alone in my car driving somewhere. I would just start talking to God about my day, my wants, my needs, any prayer requests that I had. These are just a few things you could do to start praying more or start praying differently. I hope you find them helpful. Whenever I am praying or trying to serve God and I think I may be doing it wrong or I may not be good enough, I think of a word that came to someone at one of our prayer group meetings. My children, I love you to be with me. I do not need your efforts. I do not need your talents. For I alone will make you fruitful. Just relax, be empty, and be with me. God does not need us to say the right thing. He just wants us to come to Him and to be with Him. He will make your prayers fruitful. Our efforts and talents do not provide answers to our prayers. It is by the grace and goodness of God. Following is a quote by St. Alphonsus Liguori, which I believe embodies the best way to pray. Acquire a habit of speaking with God as if you are alone with Him, familiarly and with confidence and love as to the dearest and most loving of friends. Just have a conversation with God as if you would your best friend. I hope you enjoyed listening to chapter one of my book, Total Trust in God's Safe Embrace. If you want to buy the book, you can find it on Amazon. If you want to listen to the audiobook, that's coming out soon, hopefully by the end of the month. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me to walk boldly with Jesus. I look forward to spending time with you all again on Monday. Have a blessed weekend. <music>